Hi, in this video, we will cover some of the insights from chapter three of clean code. Chapter three is all about writing great functions. And there are five tips to writing great functions. So functions are the building blocks uh, for the entire software that we write. So it's very, very important that we understand what are some of the tips to writing good functions. So the number one thing to writing good functions is to write functions that are small, meaning the lines of code. Do not write functions that are multi pages or even one screen width of uh, code. Write functions typically four to six lines or less or 10 lines. Uh, the number is very subjective, so use your judgment. But anything that goes uh, above uh, the screen uh, height, then that's typically not a good idea. Even half of the screen height is too much for, um, from a cognitive perspective. So write functions that are small, not big. And the way you can write small functions is by using the second tip in the book, which is make sure that the function does only one thing. Doing one thing in a function will help you to write small functions. So sometimes uh, there are two types of functions. Typically, uh, a function that are action-oriented where you do something, like for example, post results uh, to the database, um, uh, make an API call, etc. right? Those are command-oriented functions. And, and the second type of functions are query-oriented, wherein you ask the function, can the user log in? Uh, is the credentials correct? So these are query functions. So if you separate these two types of functions uh, into its own functions, then you can do one thing. Typically, if you combine uh, command functions with query functions, then uh, you, you tend to do more than one thing in a function. So keep them separate. So that's one tip of writing a function that does only one thing. The second thing is to avoid side effects. Let's say your function checks whether the user has the right credentials, uh, and it also initializes the session if the credentials are valid. In this case, you're doing two things. One is you're checking, which is a query. The second, you're also causing a side effect, which is initializing a session. So if you extract or refactor that method into a separate function of initializing the session, then you're no longer causing a side effect and you're only doing one thing. So avoid side effects in your functions is the second tip to help you write functions that do one thing and are small. The third tip is to avoid switch statements as much as possible. They're easy to write, but at the same time, they they do multiple things. There are multiple cases, so the function will typically not do more than one thing, will do more than one thing. So uh, it's a good idea to avoid switch statements as much as possible, and which will help you to uh, write functions that are small and will do only one thing. The third tip is to use functions uh, which have minimum arguments, like uh, at most two. Um, the best case is one or zero, but if there you start using arguments that are three or more, you should question and maybe stop and maybe even instrument style check so that errors are thrown when you try to review, right? So if you have functions that take multiple arguments, typically they are doing things, uh, they are doing more than one things in that function because there are so many things to be done with so many of these arguments. So ensure that you are writing functions that take at most two arguments. Also, it's harder to test those functions where there are multiple arguments. So testing becomes also hard. Maintenance also becomes hard. The fourth tip is to not repeat yourself. If you see that you're repeating your code over and over multiple times in your functions and across various functions, then it's a good idea to refactor that into its own function. Because if there's an error, now all of a sudden you have to fix that error in multiple places. If there is a logic issue, you have to fix it in multiple places. At the same time, you're repeating your code, so your functions tend to be large and they are doing more than one thing. So it's a good idea to not repeat yourself, keep your code dry, which is do not repeat yourself. And they'll also help you write functions that are small and doing one thing. The final tip is to use exceptions and prefer them over error codes. So there are multiple pros and cons that I found from these two slides and also by reading this chapter. And I, I want to conclude that my uh, preference now is to use exceptions as much as possible over error codes. And here's why. 
exceptions make it very easy for you to debug uh, and uh, from the stack trace as to where the error happened. You don't have to understand the entire code base uh, to debug and fix the problem. And whereas in error handling, sometimes, uh, most of the times actually, the error is swallowed and you have the error code that are thrown is at a much higher level. And so you it's not very easy to pinpoint where the error is happening. And so fixing things requires you to understand the entire code base and debug the entire situation, which takes a long time and it's very hard to do as well. The second pro of using exception is that uh, it keeps your code very clean. You know, you are just handling the happy scenario, which is what happens most of the time. Uh, there are two types of scenarios in your code, the happy scenario and the error scenario. If there's a happy scenario, meaning everything's working as expected, uh, then your code is just focus on the happy scenario. But when the error happens, you don't have to mix that error handling and happy scenario in one code base. And by that, you are doing two things in a function, makes it harder for the developer to read. Uh, and it also, one place of error handling helps to you know, understand where is the error handled, where to fix the issue when error happens, and how to extend some of those error handling. So with exceptions, it is very easy. The clean is, the code is clean, and error handling happens in one place. Whereas uh, when there is multiple errors happening, refactoring is very hard with error handling. So refactoring also is a big point. Um, you can extend exceptions very easily, but in error handling, you have to have uh, many many areas of your code changed, and uh, extension also is not trivial. So refactoring happens a lot of the times, and so exceptions make it easier, whereas error handling, you have to change a lot of code to understand uh, what errors are happening and how do we extend those errors when new errors get discovered. So also error handling requires you to handle all possible cases really well if you want to do error handling well, which is a very hard problem. But in exceptions, uh, for most programmers who are not that thorough, and I believe most programmers are, but they try to be as thorough as possible, but there's always going to be scenarios where you where you would not have imagined. So it, exceptions allow you to give that flexibility, not saying that you shouldn't handle all of the exceptions. You should as much as possible. But when you're not handling all of them, um, it's okay. Uh, and you can eventually fix them if the situation is not uh, dire, right? There are systems and um, software which require you to do handle all kinds of cases. In that case, you definitely want to do error handling in a very thorough way or even exception handling in a very thorough way. But most of the times, it's okay uh, to do not handle all of the errors and exceptions that, that the person cannot think of, right? Because they're unknown. So exception handling makes it easier. Also, it's much higher level um, when, it, when it comes to exception handling versus much more detailed error level, lower level handling where it requires you to have a lot of context. So I really think that uh, exceptions are the way to go for most of the cases, unless you have a very, very strong business case where certain things are to be handled and all situations need to be handled and uh, there's enough time to do a very, very, very thorough job with uh, error handling. So there are these two slides uh, which I found very interesting, Refactoring Guru and Blogs uh, MSDN, uh, which were giving a lot of insights on um, error handling versus exception handling. So overall, I, I with reading all of this, I feel that uh, exception handling is, is the way to go. Uh, credit goes to the author. I really recommend you to get the book. There are a lot of examples, interesting um, cases taken. So I definitely recommend getting this book. Thanks.